What happens if your energy supplier has overcharged you and is threatening to cut off your electricity or gas? I'll first run through the ways in which your energy supply is required to treat you fairly, look at why you might have been overcharged, and then we'll look at the law that protects you from being cut off and helps you resolve the problem with your supplier. Just before I start, if you're new to this channel, please do subscribe and click the notification bell to be alerted about new Legal Explainer videos I record. Energy suppliers get their licence from the energy regulator, Ofgem, and they have to follow certain rules. The main three which are set out in the standard licence conditions are that your energy supplier must behave and carry out any actions in a fair, honest, transparent, appropriate and professional manner. The information they give you must also be complete, accurate and not misleading, and they have to provide this information clearly, emphasising the parts that are important. This means, for example, that if they give you a time limit to pay your bill, they should make this time limit clear on your letter. It also means that legally they're not allowed to bill you for more energy than you've actually used. And third, they should act promptly and courteously to put things right when the licensee or any representative makes a mistake. Basically, that means if it's your energy supplier's fault that you've been overcharged, then they have to fix it. There are a few common reasons why you might have been overcharged, which I'll run through. First things first, if you think you've been overcharged, get in touch with your energy company and let them know as soon as possible. This becomes important later. You might have been overcharged because of a problem with your meter. Now there are two possible reasons for this. The first is that your meter is faulty. The second is that your meter isn't communicating with your supplier's billing systems properly. The specific obligations on the energy company to investigate a faulty meter are set out in the Electricity and Gas Standards of Performance Suppliers Regulations 2015. Under Regulation 4, if you tell your supplier that you don't think your meter is working properly, they have to complete an initial assessment of whether your meter is working and then take appropriate action, which means finding the cause of the problem and fixing the meter or replacing it. If you have a prepayment meter, the situation is usually more urgent. This is because once the money runs out, you won't have access to electricity. If you have lost supply of gas or electricity, so if you've been cut off already, your supplier has to help you quickly within three hours on a working day or four hours on a non-working day. That's section 53B. If your supplier fails to meet any individual standard of performance, so if they don't come to investigate and fix your meter within 10 days, they have to pay you £30 compensation. It's also worth noting that if your energy supplier checks your meter and they don't find anything wrong with it, they might ask you to pay a fee for the service of them checking your meter. They're legally entitled to do that. This will vary according to supplier, so have a look at their terms and conditions, which should be on their website. If your supplier tests your meter and tells you it isn't faulty, but you still think you're being overcharged, you can make a formal complaint to them and tell them how you want them to fix your problem. Most commonly, you'll want a reduced bill or a refund. Your supplier will have a complaints procedure that requires them to solve your problem within eight weeks. It's best to send your complaint by email or post, but you can also do it by phone. Now, doing it by phone is not ideal because there's more chance of it leading to confusion over what you're complaining about. Your complaint should explain what the problem is and contain relevant evidence. Now, the most common relevant evidence will be a collection of bills where you've been overcharged, photos of your meter showing the reading, any correspondence with your energy supplier telling you they're cutting you off. The details of how much you've been overcharged are also important. You can get this and your energy account number from any recent bill. Now, you should keep a record of when you make the complaint. You should keep a record of the name of the person who you spoke to, if it was on the phone, about your complaint, details of the problem you reported, which here would be overcharging, and you should get a decision letter, or what's sometimes called a deadlock letter, within eight weeks, telling you how your supplier is dealing with your complaint. If you get a deadlock letter, that means your energy company can't, or won't, do anything else to help you with your complaint. If you're not happy with the decision or you get a deadlock letter, the next step is to complain to the energy ombudsman. 
The Energy Ombudsman is an independent adjudicator totally separate from your energy company. The Ombudsman's contact details will be included in the deadlock letter you receive and I've put a link in the notes below. Again, you need to provide relevant evidence which you should have been collecting during the process. This should start from the date when you first noticed the issue, any copies of emails or phone calls complaining to your energy supplier and any other evidence, for instance how much you've been overcharged and what your supplier has tried to do about it, like testing your meter. Sometimes when your complaint's processed and your supply is notified by the Ombudsman, they might just offer you a new resolution or solution. If you accept it, great, the problem's solved. If you carry on with the complaint and the Ombudsman decides that your supplier has made a mistake or is treating you unfairly, then they will tell your supplier to take the appropriate actions to rectify the situation. These actions could include giving you credit back, sending you an apology or making sure the supplier improves its services so the issue doesn't happen again. You've got a number of rights to prevent your energy being disconnected. Having your energy cut off is actually quite rare. It's a last resort and it shouldn't happen while you're in dispute with your supplier about overcharging. Even if your bill's correct and you can't pay it, it's more likely you'll be offered a solution like fitting a prepayment meter in your home so you can't build up debt you can't manage. A back bill is a bill sent by your energy supplier when you haven't been correctly charged for your energy use and you're having to pay for the extra energy you've used but not paid for. If you send updated readings to your supplier after receiving an estimated bill and the readings are higher than your energy supplier had estimated, your back bill will be higher than your original estimated bill. It's also possible your direct debit might have been accidentally cancelled. So when your energy company notices the mistake and resolves it, your bill might be much higher. You might have been charged for the wrong meter. You might not have received a bill for a long time because of a problem with your supplier's systems. On my LBC show, I hear about that happening quite a lot. In any case, you probably won't know what's going on until you receive a much bigger bill than usual. The rules on back billing are covered by the standard licensing conditions in condition 21BA. The main rule is that you can't be charged for gas or electricity used more than 12 months ago if you've been incorrectly billed by the supplier. That means, for example, that if you get a bill in May 2021 for energy you used before April 2020, you normally don't have to pay it. So when you get a bill that you think isn't right, check what period of time it covers. It will be shown on the bill. If the bill is for more than 12 months energy use, you should contact your supplier and explain that you're protected by the back billing rules and so you won't pay for the energy used over 12 months ago, although you will have to pay for the energy used within the last 12 months. Now, if you haven't been sent an accurate bill for over a year, it's also worth investigating why this might have happened. Now, this is important. The 12 month back billing limit doesn't apply if you've done something to prevent your supplier from charging you correctly. So you might have blocked meter readings at your property, for example, by not allowing a service person in to check your meter without good reason, or you might have stolen gas or electricity. If it's your fault the energy company has incorrectly charged you, then they can still collect their debt from over 12 months ago. Your supplier is expected to engage proactively with you to gain access to your meter, but if you obstruct them excessively, then they can still collect debt over 12 months old. In 2020, the government brought in measures to stop vulnerable people having their energy cut off during lockdown. If you're on a prepayment plan, you can speak to your supplier about options to keep you supplied. If you're one of the 4 million people to benefit from this initiative, you probably know about it already. You might have had extra credit added to your account. You might have had another person go to top up your card. You might have been sent a new topped up card. Disconnection of credit meters has been completely suspended so there's no chance you'll be cut off during the pandemic unless the government changes its policy. If you can't afford to pay for the energy you've used, so if the bill is higher than normal for some legitimate reason, talk to your supplier. Condition 27.5 requires them to work with you to find the best way for you personally to manage your energy costs and any debt. Now this might involve setting up a repayment plan, as I've said, or getting a prepayment meter. Remember, during the pandemic, there's extra support if you can't pay your bill. If you have a prepay meter that you can't top up, you should ask for emergency credit. 
energy companies mustn't disconnect your house's electricity unless they've taken all reasonable steps to get you to pay your bill. It's also worth noting that suppliers aren't allowed to disconnect you between the 1st of October and the 31st of March of any year if you're a pensioner, if you're living alone, or if you have children under 18. That's to stop people being cut off during the winter months. As part of the safety net scheme by Energy UK, the six main energy suppliers in the UK have also agreed that you can't be disconnected at any time of year for reasons of age, health, disability, or severe financial insecurity. Now, if you cannot come to an agreement to settle your debt, they, your supplier, can apply to court for a warrant to enter your house and force you to have a prepayment meter or even cut off your supply. The supplier has to send you a notice telling you they're applying to court. You should do everything you can to come to an agreement with your supplier before the court date. If you don't contact them, you should attend the court hearing when, again, you can try to come to an agreement. If the court gives the supplier a warrant, your supplier should send you a notice in writing seven days before coming to your house to cut you off. If your meter's outside your property, they don't need a warrant, but most suppliers will get a warrant anyway. Under Schedule 6 of the Electricity Act 1989, your supplier is allowed to disconnect your electricity if you haven't made the relevant payments, but not if the bill is genuinely being disputed and not unless they've given you seven working days notice. Now, if you've got a smart meter, you can be disconnected remotely, but first your supplier has to have contacted you to discuss options for settling your debt, and they must have visited your home to assess whether being disconnected is an option for you. It might not be, for example, if you have a disability. There's advice on how to get reconnected on the Citizens Advice website, although hopefully it won't come to this. Remember, it's very rare to get your energy cut off, and it's almost impossible during the pandemic. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful and that you now know what to do if your energy supplier overcharges you or you see any discrepancies in your bill in general. Up here are some videos on consumer law you might find interesting. Here's a video I think you might like. And if you haven't subscribed, here's the place to do it. Click that little link. Please subscribe, click the notify bell, and I'll see you next time. I'm Barrister Daniel Barnett. Thank you.